So we are back at the extreme fear levels that we haven't seen since back in May, if you look right here. The difference between right now and May is the price, where we're currently sitting around 42,000, and back then in May, when we were at these fear levels, we were sitting around 30,000. This is definitely beginning to look a lot like what happened back in May and June. So if that's the case, does this mean that this is the bottom here, the same way it happened back in May? Or can we lose this level and see further downside? Stick around to find out in today's video. Hey, what's up? Jay here and welcome to Bitcoin Daily, bringing you guys the best tips, tutorials and ideas to help you guys become profitable and successful investors. The goal of this channel is to empower you guys, the community with the knowledge and resources to take your wealth up to that next level. So if you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications and make sure to smash the like button. Let's try to get this video up to 100 likes so that Bitcoin can bounce up. So before we get into the video, guys, please use stop losses. People just continue to get wrecked. Another half a billion dollars lost to liquidations over the last 24 hours. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's jump into these charts. So if we zoom out and look at the chart, you guys can see that we are currently at a very, very important support level. You can see that last time we dropped down to this level, we did get a bounce back up, which uh, led us on our rally all the way up to set new all time highs. We've also had this exact level here as resistance before multiple times. So as you can tell, it is a very, very important level. Also, you guys will see that uh, we have this ascending support level that's basically held this entire bull run up, right? So if we were to lose this level, it would be a very bearish sign, very bearish signal because we would lose basically everything that points to a continued bull market. We already lost a 50 week moving average. And if we also lose this level, we're probably going to see the same levels that we saw back in May and June, I would think. And we could even perhaps to cause max pain and fear go even lower, sweep these lows here and maybe test like that 25 to $20,000 range. However, I'm still bullish guys. As long as we hold here, I am still a believer. This is to me, this is my breaking point. 40,000, 40 to 42,000 dollar range. I've been pointing this range out for weeks if not months and it's for a reason. So if we look at these heat maps to see exactly where people's orders are currently at, you'll notice that the majority of orders are at this $40,000 range. So this is the order book here. And if we look here for the big orders, you'll notice that at $40,500, we have a bunch of orders there. That's a uh, buy wall right there. So there's a bunch of buy orders. And if we go lower, this one looked big, right? This, this candle right here, if we go lower, look at this candle, this candle, takes up literally the entire thing right there, right? You see that? You see this candle? Look at this one. It takes up the entire thing. This is basically the, the equivalent to the Great Wall of China that's sitting at $40,000. Beyond that, then the next big buy walls are sitting at 38,500. Um, 38,000 flat. You can see that's a big buy wall there as well. 37,680 and so forth. You know, there's going to be a bunch of different buy walls as you go down onto different supports. But right now, the important one is 40,500 and 40,000 even, right? And even 40,300 is now becoming a buy wall as well. So we have a lot of support in this area. If you look at this 12 hour candle, you can see that it's been bought and pushed back up. Looking at the four hour candles, we're already green on the four hour candle. And looking at the daily, you can see that we've been pushing the prices back up here. Now, of course, just because there's a lot of buyers there, it doesn't exactly mean that we won't break through it. As you guys can see right here, we had 
Something similar, the buy walls were not as big, but you can see there we had around 200, it says 286 orders there. Currently at 40,000, we have like triple the amount of orders, right? So because at 40,000 alone, we're sitting at 403 bitcoin orders then of course at 40,500 we have another 100 orders at 40,000 at 39,900 we have another 100 orders so we've basically doubled the amount of orders that we had when we lost this $45,000 range here the last time that we lost that we broke through a uh, buy wall right so if we go even further out and try to look for other times back in history when we've had these big buy walls and how the market reacted to it we'd have to go all the way back to the may june july you know mini bear market uh correction period right so if we look all the way back here you can see that we see a lot of these yellow lines okay so these yellow lines each yellow line represents a buy wall the thicker and the brighter the yellow line is, the more buy orders that there are at that area. The lighter and the harder it is to see, then the less buy orders, right? And also the different colors is because there's also less buy orders. So if we zoom in here, you'll see that we had a lot of these buy walls here. We had one right at the bottom of that flash crash when we had that, which of course helped the prices go back up. Then we had one throughout this entire period here. And you can see that we did dip under it, but it was quickly bought up and pushed right back up. Again, the buy wall here held up. The buy wall, you see that we have two different buy walls here. We had one here, we had one here, and those held up, pushed the price. They ended up, you know, pushing the price back up, which started our new rally. So now if we come back to where we currently are right now, it's starting to look a lot like that flash crash, right? We have the big wick down, then we have the big bounce back to the upside. We have a bunch of consolidation and then we have continuation down sweeping the previous flash crash lows. So that's exactly what it's looking like right now. And then now we have this big buy wall here. So now the second part of this theory here is if we go back to trading view and we compare the two moves. So you can see back here in the beginning of 2021 that we had this rally up and a pullback, right? So we set a new all time high here, then we pulled back to this zone right here, and then we continued up to set up a new all time high. Then when we got the big flash crash back in May, you'll notice that this crash, this low here, basically went down to these lows. So if we look at what's currently going on, we had a run up, we had a pullback, and we set new all time highs. Now we've had this massive correction down and the flash crash low is the same as the lows in this area of that pullback. So now after setting this flash crash low, the prices continued to grind down slowly and ended up sweeping the flash crash low, right? But it never swept the low of this initial pullback here months before so again if we look at where we are currently you'll see that we had the flash crash low you'll see that we just swept those lows right so we went below that but we have yet to sweep the lows of this previous correction here then of course here we also had this ascending support line here that also helped hold us up here and if we look at where we're at now we have this a same exact setup the same ascending support line is here meeting up with the same pullback support where we had so it all kind of ties in together and it just feels like we're doing the same thing that we literally just did so we have fear at the same point that we were back during this pullback. We have the supports set up exactly the same as we had back during this pullback. We have the same exact long-term support that's held us up this entire bull run. And we have the same exact buy walls that we saw last time that we had this type of pullback. So it's just so many things are lining up pointing to the same story. It's hard to just disregard it. Now my final theory, and I'm gonna end the video with this one, is are we back in a 
accumulation schematic after a distribution just happened, right? So do you guys remember back in May, June when the Wyckoff pattern was the cool thing to do for every YouTuber? So we decided to revisit currently where we are in the market and compare it to the accumulation schematic. So if we pull it up right now, this is kind of the idea, this is kind of what it gives us, what it looks like at the moment. So first, of course, we have the preliminary support, right? Once we lose it, then we get the selling climax. After the selling climax, we of course get the automatic rally where everything bounces right back up. Then we get the secondary test. After the secondary test, which is when it grinds down a little bit, we usually get a bounce back up back to the resistance zones, which is exactly what we saw here where we got rejected at $52,000, which is a major resistance zone. If you look at the way the schematic is, we always retest that line up there, which is higher than the automatic rally, which is pretty much how it looks here. So this brings us into where we currently are in phase B, right? We have after the secondary test move back up, we get rejected again, and it gives us our secondary test in phase B, which is exactly what this looks like here. So according to the Wyckoff accumulation schematic theory, we're supposed to be bouncing here back to the 50 to $52,000 range, which is the resistance lines. And then at that point, we should see another rejection that brings us either back down to the same levels or it gives us the spring which breaks it sweeps the lows and gives us another lower low before then finally pushing us up so so far we're getting that secondary test which is of course lower than the selling climax so it's testing the support levels again to confirm them and then we should be getting something like this where it kind of go back over here to this resistance line here before then getting rejected again and gain getting into the spring now the spring is usually lower than this secondary test so we could potentially get a break of 40,000 for a very small moment before then getting a push back up, getting another test one more time, and then continuing up into phase D. At that point, we'd see something like this, where we test this one more time, show some strength, and then finally break out and continue to the upside. So if what we're seeing right now is this current schematic, this is kind of how it should play out. It's not going to play out exactly to this timetable and to these levels, but it's more or less a guide on what we can expect at certain levels. So if we do get this bounce like we're seeing right now and we see the price jump all the way back up to 50, it'll kind of validate what we're currently going through, which is somewhat of an accumulation schematic here. So at that point, we should expect another rejection and another test of these lows before we can actually continue higher. So those are my theories, guys. To recap what we spoke about right now, it's currently looking very similar to back in May and June. So we took a look at both and compared them, saw many, many similarities. We also saw that we have a big buy wall at $40,000. Then we tried to make sense of the current price action that we're seeing by using the Wyckoff accumulation schematic and it looks like it could be playing out if we see a bounce here up to 50 and we see a rejection at 50 then that would kind of confirm that we are in this um, accumulation schematic currently and it'll give us a better idea of what to do next so i hope you guys have enjoyed this video if you guys are new to the channel don't forget to subscribe to the channel turn on notifications if you guys been here before, you already know what to do. If you guys been here before, you already know what to do. Make sure to smash that like button. And if you have any questions regarding anything we've covered today, drop it in the comments. I'm always happy to uh, respond. That's it for us today, guys. I am actually on my way out of here. I'm going out of town. I will be in Vegas for the next few days, but I will see you guys all back here on Monday. As always, guys, peace and love.